Hi, this is Quinlan, and today I'm out here in the rain for a good reason. One of my favorite festivals from the entire year that hasn't been held in three years, of course, because the pandemic is today. This festival is an Okuribon festival. The purpose is based on really tragic history of the northern region up here. About 300 years ago, there were a series of famines in this. Ah, hold on a second. I'm wait till the rain lightens up a little bit. There's a little mud. is lit up a little bit as you can see and I'm here now in the area where they're preparing for this my favorite of festivals you got to check this out Once a year, here in Yokote Akita, they have what's called an Okuribon festival. Okuribon means the end of Obon, where basically they're sending the spirits back to the other world. And they do it in the most magnificent, glorious way you can imagine. They build these Yakata Bune, they're called, these boats. These boats right here, made from a mixture of straw and wood, are, I believe, 750 kilograms. And they'll be lifted up by participants and slammed into other ones. There were approximately three really serious, terrible famines. And this festival started about 300 years ago in order to pray for the souls, sort of soothe the souls of those who died in the first of those great famines around roughly 300 years ago. These yakatabune would have the names, the Buddhist posthumous names, the kaimyo, written on them, and they would be sent into the river, symbolically sending those dead off into the other world. At some point, it evolved, maybe just through local personality or character, but at some point it evolved into a much more intense, ferocious festival in which two teams would each lift one of these yakatabuni, these 750 kilogram structures. They would lift them up and bring them to opposing sides of a bridge and then slam them into each other, pressing them up and letting them crash down on each other. Whichever boat ended up on top would be allowed to pass and the other would have to go back to where it started. I was lucky enough to be able to go and get a little pass here um, because of having this YouTube channel and uh, wanting to share this with people abroad. It's, again, one of my favorite festivals in the whole year, year. I'm really excited. Before it starts, let's just walk around and look at some of the food available. Here we've got what's called kushiyaki or meat on a stick. This is cow tongue. There's a uh, karubi, which is a Korean word originally. And um, yeah, these two types and man, do they look good. Maybe a little later. At a lot of festivals, you have this thing with goldfish, which you may have seen before. And people actually catch goldfish this way and take them home. Unfortunately, these aren't the healthiest goldfish. And uh, the people I know who've done this before, the goldfish often die really soon after you've caught them. So it's um, a little sad, I think. <laughs> Despite the ferocity of this, it is important to remember that this is basically something which symbolizes soothing the souls of those who died in those famines during the Edo period. And this is the end of the Obon period, where the dead have come back to visit everybody's families. And this is one of those rituals that are sending the dead back again into that other world.
スキルによりカプロス株式会社横手支店立ち産業株式会社株式会社半田君が共同組合横手焼きそばのレンズ花火師は集団確保です。Well, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the trails. And we've got someone saying hello here to my friend Pete. Hi! It's a festival butterfly. And it's gone. Well, that was bizarre. Yes, it was. <laughs>